And this was the week the race for the White House kicked up a gear. Republican voters getting down to the business of choosing their nominee to run for president in November's election. First up was the Iowa caucus, which was won by former President Donald Trump. Now the party's looking to New Hampshire, the second in a series of state-by-state contests, serving as another test for Trump, Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis. Well, Nikki Haley's ruled out serving as a vice president under Trump. I voted for Donald Trump twice. I was proud to serve America in his administration. I agree with a lot of his policies. But rightly or wrongly, chaos follows him. You know I'm right. Chaos follows him. And we can't have a country in disarray and a world on fire and go through four more years of chaos. We won't survive it. And Senator Tim Scott, who dropped out of the race last year, has put his backing behind Donald Trump and he's been speaking at a rally in New Hampshire. We need a president who will close our southern border today. We need Donald Trump. We need a president who will unite our country. We need Donald Trump. Greg Swenson is chair of Republican Overseas UK and Peter Chowk as a veteran political analyst and contributor to AmericanThinker.com. Greg and Peter, thanks very much for joining me. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Morning. Right. Let's start with you then, Greg, your reactions to Iowa this week. I, I mean, I guess there was really no surprise because the polls were, were pretty clear that, that President Trump was going to win comfortably. Uh, you know, the fact that he overperformed, you know, his polling, which was at around 48 and he came in at 51 or 52, you know, that's probably, you know, good for his momentum. But I, th- you know, I think that the important fact to consider is, you know, he, he is almost an incumbent president and incumbents typically poll at 90 or higher. And if they don't, they end up losing in the general election. So, you know, I, I don't, even though he's not an official, he is, you know, three years ago and is considered a, a quasi incumbent. So I, I don't know. I mean, this was great for his momentum, but I don't know that it's, it's suggesting that winning the general election will be easy. Yeah, Peter, it's probably worth pointing out, for, you know, for our listeners that this caucus made big news this week. It's the first one and in, in these state by state decisions, but only 5% of the state could vote. Only 15% of them turned up. So 110,000 voters out of a possible 700,000. So 110,000 voters making this decision. And when you extrapolate that out, you know, on how many people will actually be involved in a general election, if indeed Trump gets the nomination. We're, we're quite a way away from that yet, Peter. Absolutely. And I agree with Greg on the outcome, the outlook. And of course, Iowa is a very small and unrepresentative state population wise. But also, I think uh, right now it's impossible to predict what's ahead this year. I mean, as we sit here today, it's three years to the day since President Biden took the oath of office. And it's one year to the day until the new president will be sworn in and take power. And the year ahead, there's just so many moving parts. It's really impossible to predict. There's so many wild cards. For example, will Donald Trump not only succeed in being elected if he gets the nomination, but will he become the Republican nominee? There are a number of shoes left to drop with the uh, legal cases that he faces, 91 felonies he's been indicted for. And a significant number of Republican voters have told pollsters that if President Trump is convicted in any one of those cases, this significant number will no longer support him. And similarly with President Biden, We don't know if he will be the nominee. There are rumors that Michelle Obama is interested in perhaps stepping in as the nominee. And uh, President Biden right now is the most unpopular incumbent Mm. president in recent history. So he has a lot of challenges facing him as well. Yeah, and I want to get to that in just a minute. But Greg, (laughs) I wanted to ask you, first of all, who do you think uh, Trump is most worried about? Is he worried about Nikki Haley or is he worried about Ron DeSantis? Uh, I, I imagine he's, pr- you know, more worried about Nikki, especially because the primary in New Hampshire on Tuesday is is very well suited for Nikki Haley. You know, that's a it's a state where fifty percent of the voters are independents and and they're they can vote in the Republican primary. It's also a state where the Republicans 
themselves are are more moderate, surely more moderate than Iowa. And, you know, they're considered more, you know, New England Republicans. So that's very well suited for Nikki Haley, I think. Um, and DeSantis, for the most part, is in single single digits in, in New Hampshire. Now, when you get to, to South Carolina, it might be a different issue, mm-hmm. even though even though Nikki Haley is from South Carolina and former governor. You know, I think Governor DeSantis would, would play better in South Carolina and, and surely on Super Tuesday. But, but I think that, you know, because Governor DeSantis draws fr- a lot from the same lane as President Trump, he's Trump is probably, you know, with his recent success, probably not as worried about okay. DeSantis, where where Nikki draws from a, a much more, you know, much different lane yeah. in the Republican Party. With that in mind, then Peter, so it's, I believe that it, it polls showing that a, a matchup between um, Trump and Biden is kind of neck and neck, and and Biden would potentially win there. Uh, but polls showing a, a matchup between Nikki Haley and Biden that she has more of an advantage. This is talking about the the actual running for president part of it all. Right. Well, as we sit here today, that is certainly true. But uh, you know, I've been monitoring what the Republican candidates have been saying in the past 24 hours in the wake of Iowa. And this is very interesting because Nikki Haley is suddenly uh, changing her spots, so to speak. She and her mm. surrogates are now positioning her to the right of President Trump. Most people thought she was more moderate, but she was speaking on Fox Cable News on Friday morning. And she said that uh, uh, she criticized Trump for being she said, I'm going to be hard on China, implying he was soft. Uh she, he, she said he praised – President Trump praised President Xi a dozen times after China gave us COVID, end quote. And uh, she also insisted that she's been a conservative all of her life because a lot of the mainstream media has positioned her as a more moderate centrist Republican. And I think she's now trying to move to the right all of a sudden to uh, challenge President Trump and Ron DeSantis in South Carolina. My sources in South Carolina who have lived there all their lives and are conservative conservative tell me that she is not that popular among conservative voters in South mm-hmm. Carolina. So, uh, again, it looks very favorable at this point for President Trump getting the nomination. But there are, as I said earlier, so many unknowns that it's really impossible to predict the outcome. Greg, what are the key issues for the Republican voter in, in these primaries and then also in, in the general? Yeah, I think, you know, as usual, you start with the economy and especially or specifically inflation, um, which has really hurt voters uh, on both sides of of the aisle. I mean, you know, real wages are down two and a half percent in the U.S. since Biden took office. So that's that's always going to be a a leading issue. Um, And then and then secondly is the border. There's just it's it's just something that that they cannot ignore anymore. And I think you'll see the Democrats even start to pivot on that. You're seeing some pushback from, from Biden's own party. So those are, I think those mm-hmm. are the, the top two issues and will, will probably continue to be. Well, listen, Greg and Peter, thank you for taking the time to speak to us, all eyes on New Hampshire this week. And then it will continue. Fascinating to watch. Greg Swenson, Chair of Republican Overseas UK and Peter Chowka, the political analyst. It's- 